Howdy. For number three, farmhouse improvements, um, I wanted to go over something uh, a little bit different. Um, usually what I do is, I mean, you can see this, um, I go ahead and make a bunch of sounds ahead of time. That was That's kind of my goal. It's kind of my thing. That way, when you start your production, you don't get slowed down. You have a bunch of cool stuff. La, 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 la. Cool. For this one, um, I came to a spot right here. I'll show you where I was short something, so I had to make a sound on the spot. So check it out. Right there. So um, this sound I hadn't actually designed ahead of time. Let's play it. And in the mix of everything, it sounds pretty good. And it's got like uh, compression, sidechain compression, and vintage warmer. So um, nothing crazy, not even in the bus here. So worked out pretty well. Um, inside here, if you will take note, uh, here we go. I guess this one is going to be about modulating modulators. It's kind of douche. No, it's, it's very douchey. But uh, the difference between um, normal sound design and kind of going in a couple levels deep is things can get pretty complicated, but it also pays off. So um, if you listen, oh God, let's get away from that automation. First of all, the two ear thing, that's pretty cool. I found that uh, basses, you only really want one voice more often than not. Um, the reason I say that is if you do like three, four, five voices, it's more noise, but it's less tight. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's more something I would do to a lead just to like stack stuff. So I usually try to do one voice. Sounds pretty good. In this case though, I wasn't, there was literally nothing else that was going to be playing. So I didn't have to compete with anything. And so the usual rule of having basses be front and center, pretty mono didn't apply so this whole this thing pretty sick so um two voices if you're kind of using it as an effect is okay let's get rid of those things it is not the worst thing ever um now what i actually did uh let's see we've got one main envelope that's just running the show and we've got it on pitch i'll take it off pitch so you can just hear what it's doing in general And let's turn off, um, let's just do one voice so you can hear. Okay, so basically this guy, um, uh, I've got an envelope that comes up pretty quick and then doesn't go all the way back down uh, like you would for a pluck doesn't go down there it hangs out kind of in the middle and instead of it just going there it's actually going like this um, the decay level is actually probably one of the coolest things that you could um, that you could modulate because your envelope if it's closed like a pluck again doing that on the cutoff if you open it back up again there's still sound ready and waiting there for you. It's just waiting down here. So uh, if you were to just call it a day here, there's still a lot of wiggle room here. So um, this guy, it, you know, regardless of what's, what it's attached to, you can hear what it's doing. Kind of just in and out of like all of these things. So it's like if I took, uh, if I took this elephant, I think it's five, six, six, there we go. So it's like if I took this, LFO and put it everywhere that there's a one. Oh, this is gonna be annoying to turn off, but so kind of double double modulating without having to use two squares. So then I used the internal envelope on the rate, so it wasn't just the same speed. Picks up. 
All of that, of course, determined by this macro down here. Great. So let's, uh, we're going to kind of go in for the long haul here. That's, that's the trick. So if you're, if you're good, the bit, just bail. That's, we're done. Um, but let's try making something from scratch. Let's see if it doesn't sound shitty. Here we go. And I, you know, we'll see if this is worth it to watch, uh, watch me do this from nothing. Eh, we'll see. So let's go over here. I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing it in this, in this setting. Uh, but we'll just might as well. We're here. Okay. So this is how I often go about it. Right now I have a goal. I have a thing in mind that I'm going to try. So there's no need for a reference track. Reference tracks are something that I use all the time. I'll have just like a little snippet of something to inspire me or to um, directly copy, dare I say, give it a try. In this case, it's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to try looking at my phone. I just saw somebody at Starbucks. Cool story. Anyways, here we go. Oh, I do want coffee right now. That sounds pretty good. Damn it. Okay. Uh, another thing that I do when I'm designing sounds is I give them a little bit of space. The MIDI anyways. Here we go. Try it in different ranges. Just have that kind of ready. Kind of, kind of sucks, but that's just that's how, it, that's how it goes. So another thing is that when you press down, you need to make sure that there's no latency. I turned on low latency mode because there's a lot of other stuff going on on this track and um, 256 uh, samples of a buffer size. This is like the only thing that I end up changing for if there's any delay. You just don't want delay because it's going to affect how you make your um, modulation decisions. So enough garbage. I've got my keyboard here. I've got my little MIDI testing thing here. And I'll even go as far as doing this. Send it up an octave. Huh. Now you got two. Okay. Let me just go ahead and say, I hope this doesn't suck. Oh. I want to do something kind of bassy. Bring it down an octave, because, hey, we're here. Okay. Say so we got that. Uh, things I'm listening for, side note when I'm doing this, is I'm trying to find something that I can build on that is a good balance of, like, it's obviously not done. It's just a wavetable. But it doesn't suck. Here's here's one. So this is what I'm going with. Because when I go down here, I think that's a good tone. When I get up here, I, I think I can mess with that. If I were to just do this one, I don't know. Let's pick a shitty one. Yep. Pass. Not the worst wavetable ever, but it's not gonna it's not getting me to the end game of kind of having this dubstep y that that okay this should be interesting, so we as per usual, just get our fourth envelope up to speed, and let's just i mean let's just get the ball rolling here. we go up. And we go this way. So you could you could hear if that was all I did. Uh, let's go Standardville, USA. Um, you'd throw a hard clipper, parabolic shaper, um, Bronner tube, or classic tube. That's you'll, you'll show you the difference. Bronner tube. God, it's just fuck. How easy. And then we go even farther, send do the same octave trick. Then 
There we go. Kind of cool. No filtering, nothing yet. Bronner tube when it's all the way up is pretty aggressive. Um, and that's the only really time I like using it like that. You know what though? This is cool. Hell yeah. I'm down with that. So we're, we're hanging out in the middle here. And it's cool that it affects both, both the pitch and um, wavetable position and mode intensity. It's cool that it affects all that at the same time. Because your LFO now is going to have be a larger player. So, um, same, uh, same kind of bass trick. Um, you just throw phase modulation on. There you go. I don't know what I'm doing there. This should go. Yeah. Always want your modulation oscillator to follow um, your oscillation pitch. I think I did that in my last video because things get pretty wonky when this is not following that. So just you try not doing it. Might sound better. Fuck me. Okay, what I do like about it and what I don't like about it. This is trying so hard to be like a cool, gritty bass. And the, the reason I even went with Classic Tube here was so... Um, the reason I went with Classic Tube was so I got a little bit more of the beef, not the like crunchy, gnarly distortion. So same thing here. Let's try just throwing this on and having it just peak up above um, no phase modulation. So when it's not doing anything, what I like is right here, it's kind of got that, um, just like we were talking about with Zomboy, basses and sounds, having that high frequency thing just kind of going above everything. Let's bump it up a little bit. That's like, that's a sweet spot. If I go here, it just kind of clips out. Ooh, sick. Now this is where I throw a macro. I, I messed around with it. I didn't know what I was going to do. But I'm liking it because it's like, it's got a little bit of this push-pull thing going. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'll then match this this decision with something else in in this whole um, routing modulating shenanigans it's kind of got that side chain push so hey that'll sound good with attack on just a little bit cool um, now let's try messing around with some filters Yeah, uh, quick thing about screen filter, if you don't know what's up here, is uh, screen filter only works as not a low-pass filter when you have resonance on. Scream has no effect, and so now it's just a low-pass filter. Nice low-pass filter. Okay, um, you know, since, since we're here, nah, I'll hold off on that. I was going to, here's what I was going to do. Standard thing, standard macro. This is standard as it gets. Do a, I would set that as like a wobble macro, but uh, I'm gonna hold off on that because I want to get a sweet, a sweet sound first. So let's try. Oh. 
There we go. Right here. The reason I got excited. I heard a little bit of that wet kind of tone. Motorcycle. Heard that kind of wet tone and just went for it. And I was like, hey. Fuck yeah. Right here. Loses all of it. But that's good news. This is where we can keep, like, we can put a distortion macro. Now let's see if our bandwidth wants to play around a little bit. Okay, now I'm looking for things that when I when I move them around a little bit, they're gonna ultimately, um, just like our pitch, they're gonna go up and down with our LFO that we're eventually gonna do. I don't like cutoff moving very much. It's a little bit of a harsh. It's not as subtle as this. This is just kind of pushing and pulling a little bit. This is going yeah 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 a little much. Resonance I think too will be pretty interesting. We're always going to leave a little bit on here. A little bit of resonance. Okay. Now this is where oh, there you go. This is where I bring in a second filter. Only after this point that I've gotten a good sound. Hold on. Oh, God, that was awesome. Now, only after I've gotten that far is it worth bringing in this other filter because I've gotten this cool sound that I like. Okay. And I'm definitely going to play around with that a little bit. Go to mix two. It should sound exactly the same. Let's make sure it does. Okay. It's going to sound exactly the same because this signal is going to filter one. That's it. It's not going to filter two. This guy is being processed by this filter and heads in here. Just kind of reviewing this stuff in case uh, it's confusing as hell, which it always is. So because this guy has nothing, go nothing changed going to sound the same regardless of where uh, what output I'm going for so now let's try uh, actually having this and this work together to make something cool band pass and band reject I've always found are uh, a nice little combo let's try brana tube again no, sounds too much like a fart. Okay, so right now, just to kind of give you what what I'm thinking about. Um, sounds like spit. Like someone's just going, and then spitting. Not, a, not a deal. Okay, so bandpass isn't really adding anything to the situation. So, comb filter can always be pretty nuts. Comb filter, the the thing I do like about it and don't like about it is the fact that it's so intense, it has comb filter written all over it. It's like, hey, I used a comb filter. Hmm, that was an interesting idea. I found out a way that we're going to make this work. So, a uh, comb filter, when when you just use it, 
you can pretty quickly here, especially if we're going to mess with the pitch. I almost never try to do that because when you do mess with the pitch, guess what? It, it's very noticeable that you're using a comb filter and it's, I don't care if anyone's like, oh shit, he's using a comb filter, but it's, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't make it sound like one cohesive thing sound. So, uh, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm, I'm okay with messing with the pitch because we're already messing with our overall pitch. So, you know, it might as well just kind of match that along. But when I initially press it, you just hear that top end and it's not like a Skrillexy. Oh, sick. It's just kind of distracting. It's not very intense. So I want a way for this to, ah, this is perfect. That's perfect. Um, to come in, not quite at the beginning. So, um, we do damping all the way down. You can't hear anything. Ooh. When damping is all the way, I think it's on actually damping when it's to the left dampens it maybe i'm wrong no that's i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm right here because it's the same here with uh reverb and whatnot um so when damping is all the way to the left suddenly you can't hear this pitch anymore so envelope two okay even that i don't really like so we're gonna make a little tweak here should be interesting I don't have a lot of other uh, modulation going on, so this is fine. Copy this one. Copy, paste. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay. right there you're just like uh something like a rubber band Okay, I tried to go for, <clears throat> here's what was going on, um, kind of the play-by-play. -play. Our classic tube, dude, this sucks if you're not into this. <laughs> Side note, uh, so, sorry about that. Um, the classic tube, I use a classic tube to get uh, a beefier sound with less top end, like you have with a crunchy Bronner tube. Cool. The problem with that, though, is we suddenly have less high end. We have less cutting through it's just a little bit more it's a clearer muddied thing it's not like it's not just pure mud and like crispy distortion downstairs doing all that you can kind of hear it a little bit more in the lower end problem we don't have much high end so um this guy gave us a little bit of that high end right here right at the beginning a little in the middle this makes sure that we have some so There we go. Okay, now on to what we were actually going to do this whole time. LFO5 on envelope level. And I've got this one is also uh, part of the picture because damping is the same envelope just held off a little bit.
the pitch is such that it's such a small amount that it's going in between that it's it's fine. Okay. Okay, internal envelope on the rate, just like we were talking about. Tack up, decay up. It's not going to show you in the picture because tack is all the way up here. It's fine. Yeah, the reason I brought the rate down that low is because when uh, the thing that I was like stoked on hearing was I'm gonna turn on the fan. Damn it! Oh, it's not plugged in. It's fine. Fuck me. So um, the reason the rate uh, I, again I brought it lower than normal is because the thing I really liked about about this sound is the potential for this like. Just really having a moment or two to be able to really hear some some other just feel that um, feel that LFO do its thing along with the envelope. Now let's get the top side. Quicker attack. Let's keep playing. So now what I'm looking for is I'm trying to support this without getting in its way. So I'm trying to find something when it's all the way up, it sounds good. And then I'm just going to go from here, bring it up and down just real quick. You know, for as much massive stuff as I've done, I never use modern talking. Probably because I feel like a piece of shit when I'm doing it. But nope. No worries on anyone that does. Probably should. Ooh, right there. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, how do I do that? Okay, notice how you hear that top end right here, but not very much. Right there, I hate this beginning. Oh, right there is where it just sounds awesome. So I want this to be completely off. Maybe like this. No, that's not going to do it. Um, and maybe this envelope too is what I need. So lame. There we go. Okay. Good use of modern talking there. Okay. So I call this movement.
here's what happened. First of all, movement. Created a bit of a cardinal, uh, committed bit of a cardinal sin um, whilst making a sound. Um, I actually... I'm okay with that. So remember, recall that our first sound here, um, our first macro that was just not something that I wanted to be in the main sound, but something that I thought, hey, that's a cool version. Um, kind of like uh, attack side chainy. So just a couple little adjectives to help me remember what I'm doing. Um, the actual sound, though, I didn't want that to be a part of it. That's why I made it a macro. Otherwise, I would have just moved that knob. The problem was... After that moment, I left it on for the entire duration of our sound designing. So that's all fine because, I mean, it's, hey, it's our, it's our sound. It's our sound. We can do what we want with it. But it, it's, it's there now. When I take this off, it's only moving the ring modulation oscillator. No, the ring modulation. Ring modulation. We'll go with that. Um, it's only taking the ring modulation off. That's all it's doing. And that's fine. But what it's really doing is it's now taking all the little tweaks that we've done and possibly undoing some of them because we didn't account for exactly how it sounded in the attack phase, in the decay, sustain. We didn't hear it, so. Now with it on. I think it sounds stronger. I think it sounds stronger with attack on because with that volume swell without it it's like it's just kind of hanging at least this way it's like pretty strong and this is again this is probably the only time that I'm going to like hone this in and leave it I can I'll still always be able to automate it but now I'm, I'm at a point where I want to finish my sound And so you, you got to just make that call where this is going to be for the duration. Okay. Now, uh, another thing. Let's do... This is going to be tricky. How do we turn this off? Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, am I? Okay. We've got another, another pitch slot. So um, I've got two options here. Option one is have the pitch... Option one is have the pitch stay the same and just put a, uh, a macro here to side chain it. So this won't have any effect, but the rest of the envelope will. I can't change this envelope to go back to uh, something like this. I can't have it just zero out because decay level is already taken, and that's literally the one we need. So... I'm either going to sidechain it or I'm going to use a performer and make this pitch go crazy when I want. So what's more valuable to me, having no pitch bend or a lot of pitch bend? Let's find out. Well, fuck. All right, you know what? We've committed. 12, 12, and 12. Yeah, this is going to be... The only real argument here, I mean, and this is sounding pretty shitty, so the only real argument for keeping this or continuing to play around with that is I, even if a sound isn't something that I would ever really use in a production, even if that's not the case, um, I do like when it's something that I can um, 
when I that I can really hear something that's totally different from what I had planned. You get your sound, everything's sounding fine. You're like, hey, whatever. I'm just going to keep with it. But if you can change that perspective to be like something radically different, you can turn that macro on and it'll give you some new ideas in the middle of your produ- uh, producing. So I thought this sounded shitty, but if it was interesting enough, I'd probably keep it. But it's not. Moving on. Okay, so we bring this guy here, side chain, side chain, side chain, and we'll do side chain up. Okay, now when it's side chain up, the direction of this arrow is determining, okay, we know that we're going to use this macro. This arrow is saying, hey, uh, modulation. Oh, God, this is going to be stupid. Modulator, you need to listen to this arrow. This arrow is going to tell you when I'm going to allow you to go through and do your thing. When it's pointing in the opposite direction, when the macro is not matching this, you are banned. Not going to happen. So when this is off, no pitch. This, we say, pitcher. Ha. Okay, subtle change. It's only four semitones. Whatever. Everyone's happy. I mean, it's really only going to be changing a tiny bit anyways. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, so now we're getting close to getting close to that point where we just macro out for days. Sorry. Let's try position. lame okay and you know what we're here this is just uh, i'm sorry i mean this is how long it takes me so i i don't even know who's going to be down to watch this far but whatever might as well take the finish line Ooh. exactly what we needed Tension. Okay, what's going on here? We have, um, oh, this is going to be perfect. First of all, it sounded pretty good right off the bat. Ah, it's awesome. So, the two reasons I like this macro. Reason one, we're going to have pitcher on for the most part. Tension here is fighting, is having the oscillators that do show up to actually be a part of the sound. Whenever they're on, whenever amp is on with these guys, they're fighting against this zero pitch because they're going between uh, zero, minus 12, so the octave that they are, and they're kind of shifting a little bit, and they're fighting against this consistent, not modulated pitch. So it's, it's like a subtle thing. But it's that's pretty cool. Now the second reason I like it is when I take pitcher off. Now it's just having this on, having this um, extra oscillator on. All oh, this no sucks. No thanks. And it gives it like a nice top layer. Ooh, that's so cool. So yeah, keeping it. Thank you for your support in that decision. Okay, so we've got tension, we've got the attack side chain, we've got the movement uh, affecting the LFO. Now we've got three to just kind of go nuts with. Um, 
see what this happens. What happens here? No, it sucks. Okay, so cutoff is like one of the most valuable uh, macros that you could play with. So let's find something that sounds actually good. Okay, so what I did in so many moves. Um, we talked earlier about, I remembered how this sounded cool when we brought our cutoff down a little bit. Um, sounded kind of like just a little bit of your distortion-y kind of, but not not just distortion, but um, kind of that telephone EQ kind of thing where uh, it's like distorted vocals. So it's kind of cool. So um, I went with that found a bandwidth that matched that, added more distortion, and then shaped that distortion so it didn't sound like I was just adding distortion and crunch to it. This is a little much. By doing this, we get that telephony effect. Phone call. And so we start to see what happens when you have a shitload of macros. Things that you couldn't have anticipated. And I think this, certainly right now, it's not great, but. You can see how that's a really interesting sound texture. And we have three uh, three macros left, so that's the whole macro thing. Just do it, just do it. It's awesome. Now when I'm playing, I haven't, oh, I haven't even done this yet. Okay, so this is where you have to make a, a judgment call. Um, I, you know, there's only so much um, macroing and automating that you can do. So uh, you can't macro the number of voices. And I think even if you could, it would be weird. So um, this, though, I think sounds... Marginally cool. Pretty wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give myself instructions. Because I, I want to hear this kind of wide thing as part of the fundamental sound. And I'm going to call this mono. Change, uh, change one voice. Because when it's in the middle like this, when I, when I go to mono imaging, then there, it doesn't sound as cool as it does here doesn't have as much breathing room. Kind of a little bit of phasey. Yeah, right there. Sucks. So, I want to give myself instructions that, hey, I, th I like how it sounds imaging-wise here, but it's also a really great sound when it's in mono and there's one voice. So, I'm going to have two voices out here, and then when I do this, it says, hey, change one voice. Oh, 
got it. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. Whew. How long are we doing? Oh my god, guys, this sucks. Sorry about it. Hopefully you learned anything or just deleted this immediately. Okay, so now another one I really like messing around with. Voila. Um, mix is always a great one to play with because you're, especially if you're using two and you're using them in serial, serial mode. Oh, God. Stretch. Oh. Especially if you're doing two in mix, uh, two in serial mode, um, each of them has a different objective. So you're not just having them be slightly different. You're going to have two very different tones in mix one using only filter one and mix two using only filter two. Or in this case, using both because it's in serial. I'm also having it go to parallel so that it even, even more so does it have like that kind of split personality. Um, I'm realizing that series to parallel isn't doing anything. Is it? I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, uh, normally it would do something if this was the case and it was in the middle, but it's not. So um, the signal is only going to filter one. This is the only one that I've left in the middle. So uh, normally, though, turning this on, it, it's just definitely going to give you a different characteristic if uh, you're using both filters. Um, you're sending it to both filters. Huh. Use mix, use serial to parallel. And then I liked how it was kind of doing this, like, this whole thing. Side chain quarter note. Someone commented on a post that I'm tagged in? Wow. Hmm. And it's... No one cares, unfortunately. It wasn't about me, so... This is going to attach to uh, LFO6. Oh, that's so cool. God, you hear that? It's literally like a kick drum and a bass. So that's just something you couldn't ever predict. <laughs> cool. This is like, this is the experience I go through when I make sound. It's like, cool, no one cares. Okay, now we've got one left and we've got, we're in a good spot because we've got two performers and an envelope left. So there's no excuse to not have like a great last one. A lot of the times I'll end up um, not being so sparse with my modulating around here. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that we've done has been to macro and amp. Yeah, I, I mean, that's half of it anyways. And in that case, I don't know, when I, I, I just like can quickly run out of all of my modulation targets, all these little squares. And then you kind of settle for like low pass filter, something like quick and easy because you have like one left. Now we've got three left. So I know we can mess with the pitch or the, the comb filter. That'll be interesting. Uh, yeah, you know what? Hey, we're here.
that's kind of cool. Okay, let me explain what I did. Now, ah, this is going to be perfect. So what I did was I took, um, uh, this is going to suck because I only have one module, uh, one macro left. I'd love to have two, but I only have one. So um, what I did was uh, I found a good spot with the comb filter pitch that it wasn't all wonky. It, it kind of just like complemented the sound a little bit and changed it up just enough. And it fit in. It wasn't like, it wasn't distracting. So it wasn't like, comb filter, hey. So that was number one. Number two that I did is I then put a stepper with glide modulation on. And I think that's the mod, glide mod. Sure, we'll call it that. Um, and basically what it does is it, when you have these two on, it's going to glide. Uh, it basically turns it into a sine wave instead of a um, on-off state. So it goes on and off, on and off. When this is all the way down, it just goes on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And I was kind of liking how it was sounding, just kind of giving a little bit of wiggling. But as I kind of made it more strict and raised the ratio, it's kind of this like movement thing this like pretty intense uh movie soundtrack kind of thing so then what i did is i pushed the entire effect of like the whole pitch thing that's going on i brought this all the way to zero so nothing is happening with any of these uh two modulation um modulations until decay kicks in and decay makes it go from here to here longer so I turned that up so I, I like I like having some that are just movement based this is pretty sweet okay so now for this one uh, it's perfect no, that's too long. Yeah, let's try this. That's where, that's where we're going to leave it. I'm going to call this appropriately. Okay, so 116 movie. That's kind of lame, but I don't care. Okay. Now, turn that off. Oh, got to make sure that this actually does something. So, amp. Because we have two voices, it's kind of... Ah, oh, this is just so cool. Okay, so in summary, we're done now. That's the process that I go through. Um, in this case, I went a little farther because I'm not producing a track anymore. Um, I can kind of separate. Uh, but I had a goal, and that was to fill this kind of like... Low section. And now I've got all these macros to help me out. Oh god! Fucking side chain that shit. So you see how the producing is like done for you almost because you're setting up setting yourself up to have really good ideas. So it's like, hey, if you're gonna start a business, you should probably get a lot of really smart people to help you out and be in the same room with you because at some point one of them's gonna be like, Hey, I've got an idea. It's going to be awesome. Instead of you having to just come up with everything on your own. These are your team players. These are your teammates. And fucking put them to use. So this was the longest video in the world. Happy hour. Oh, God. It's going to take forever to upload. But it's fine. Without further ado. You know what? Uh, you guys you guys earned it. 
Let's see. Oh, my God. Oh, Cardinal Sin. Oh, I'm so nervous. Uh, draw box. Uh, BA. Tension. Tensioner. Tension. That'll, that's fine. Cardinal Sin. Never, ever do what I just did. And uh, farmhouse to and not save it until the very end. Oh my god, that would have sucked. I just gotta watch this video, but that would have. <laughs> I don't even want to watch this video. So uh, then this part, and in, in case you're not familiar, um, the saving is always pretty important. Um, you save as. Uh, I mean, I guess if you've never done it, you just hit save. Um, I put it into. I call it Massive Sounds 2 because I'm organizing my sounds into banks of 100. So um, in browser, if you look here, Farmhouse, these are all my sounds that we're using for the videos. Farmhouse 2 is my second batch of 100. So uh, now that it's officially saved. Got all these. And having a different uh, mindset when you have a, a second group of sounds is is good to kind of keep them separate. I like to not forget about my production tools and also emphasize that, hey, look, I've only got four now, so I need to really build this one up. So um, I keep them in two separate folders physically. Um, it's massive sounds and massive sounds too. Attributes, you just put in your name. I mean, this is my... This is my studio and bank name. This has to be spelled exactly the same. As soon as you do that, it'll it'll automatically show up and everyone's happy. So hope you guys like this uh, hour long piece of sound designing shenanigans. I suppose I'll see you again shortly.